everybody. Um, so, if you remember a few days back, uh, Shakira um, said that we all come from Africa. And in fact, I come from the tip of Africa, uh, Cape Town. Um, but all of us do, in fact, come from Africa. And it's Africa where I'm going to begin. And the place I'm going to begin is three and a half million years ago with a fossil skull called Lucy, which was discovered in uh, Afar, uh, Ethiopia. And this is Lucy's skull, 3.25 million years ago. This is Homo erectus skull, 1.6 million years ago. And this is modern human. Um, modern human first appeared maybe 100, 150,000 years ago. And you don't have to be a paleoanthropologist to see that something very interesting has happened in the space of three million years. So Lucy's skull is about the size of a modern day chimpanzee. Modern day humans, us, have skulls which are three times bigger than they should be for a primate of our size. And so in three million years, our brain has expanded threefold. So that's the good news. <laughs> so this was 150,000 years ago. What has happened in 150,000 years to the present? Well, this is the bad news, not very much. <laughs> but if we think how we've been using that brain, then very dramatic things have happened. And so only 10,000 years ago did we our ancestors start to settle, and we settled right here in the Middle East. And we started to build villages, cities, live in communities, start agriculture. And then after about another 5,000 years, we invented the alphabet. We started writing and reading, only 5,000 years ago. And then if you fast forward, then we come to somebody who you all know very well, so this is probably the most famous scientist that we know of, uh, certainly in the 20th century, Albert Einstein. And this is Albert Einstein looking at his brain. And here is a control brain of somebody who is not Albert Einstein, maybe one of us. And I always think this is slightly amusing because who would want to be the control for, <laughs> for Albert Einstein's brain? But if you go to the most expert anatomists and give them this brain or Albert Einstein's brain and say which one came from the more intelligent person they will not be able to tell you. If you say did this come from a woman or a man they will not be able to tell you. If you ask is this person right-handed or left-handed they will not be able to tell you. If you ask what color is this person they will not be able to tell you. These brains come from the human race, and there is nothing to distinguish them. Despite the many popular books that have been written explaining how women's brains are pink, men's brains are blue, etc., etc., it's not true. But now imagine a stranger comes to you on the street and says, I have discovered on Earth an extraordinary machine that can construct itself. And you think, that's amazing, because when I look around at all this machinery, computers, internet, and so on, it didn't construct itself. We constructed it. If I say this machine can teach itself, and it can teach other machines like it, you say, well, this is a crazy person. <coughs> then if they say, this machine that constructed, can construct itself, can teach itself, has constructed every bit of technology on planet Earth, you will surely call for doctors to take them away to a psychiatric hospital. But there is such a machine, and this machine is us. We are this machine. So if we look inside Einstein's brain, this is what we'll see. So this is a slice through Einstein's brain. Black are the nerve fibers that connect 
different regions of the brain. These are the myelinated nerve fibers that conduct impulses. This bridge here is the connection between the left and the right hemisphere that Idan spoke of earlier. And one of the things you may have read in popular books is that women use both hemispheres about equally, whereas men are pretty much the silent types. They don't use the left hemisphere. It's a little shrunken thing. And they're really right hemisphere. And one can see that in this structure here called the corpus callosum that's connecting the two hemispheres. The corpus callosum in women, these books say, is larger than the corpus callosum in men. It's absolutely not true. Corpus callosum, men and women, same size, left and right hemisphere, same size. Is that a disappointment to you? I don't know. <laughs> but if we dig down now, so these are the nerve cells that sit in a particular bit of brain called the neocortex that, that I work on a lot. And what you see here is only a sample of about 1% of all the nerve cells that are sitting in this little bit of tissue. And connecting those nerve cells are wires, we call them axons. And in a cubic millimeter of this neocortex, there are about 50,000 such nerve cells. And they connect to each other in a cubic millimeter, in each cubic millimeter of your neocortex is four kilometers of wire connecting these nerve cells. So this is telling you that you've got some extreme design that evolution happily has given us that provides the apparatus that allows us to have this conversation today. If we dig down even further, then we'll see here, and this is an electron micrograph, taken at a power of about 20,000. And what we see here are structures that are the wires. So here's a wire, here's a wire. This is another kind of wire, here's a wire. And we also see the points of contact between these nerve fibers, which we call synapses. And in your brain and mine, we've got about 15,000 million nerve cells connected with about 15 million million synapses. And these synapses have to find their way during our fetal development in the brain to make the correct connections between the nerve cells. And the Spanish anatomist Ramon y Cajal called, this, called these synapses the protoplasmic kisses. As these wires grow out to find their partners, in the end, they make these kisses. And these kisses are shown by these little arrows. These are the synapses. And you can only see them under the electron microscope. And those synapses are the places where the learning in our brain takes place. And so the modification of the circuits in the brain are taking place right now at these places in your brain. So let's look at some other myths of the brain. So, as Elan said, we've been developing brains for a long time, about 400 million years, and um, one idea is that somehow within our brain still lurks the pieces of the original ancestral brain. And so right in the middle, you've got a reptilian brain, somewhere sitting in your, in your, in your brain. is this kind of snake-like brain. And Outside that is this limbic system, which is supposed to be your emotional brain. And then outside that, you have this neocortex that I work on, which is your rational brain. And mostly the rational brain does what it needs to do. It's rational. And in fact, 85% of what's inside your skull and mine is the neocortex and its connections. But every now and again, the reptilian brain breaks out and makes you do something that is reptilian. Or... <laughs> You have the emotional brain that takes over suddenly and your rational brain can't cope with it. This is utter nonsense. <laughs> we have a common ancestor with what is now we call reptiles. Our common ancestor with reptiles was over 300 million years ago. I hope, as you've seen from the first slide, that you understand that we've evolved a bit and this reptilian brain as it functioned 
in the ancestor is no longer functioning in the same way. Same with the limbic system. This is an invention of psychologists in the 1950s, and it was a very useful simplification, but it was a simplification. We now know from a lot of brain research that structures which were formerly assigned to this limbic system, like the hippocampus, are crucially important for the um, development and consolidation of memory. And then the neocortex, my favorite bit of the brain. Um, again, lots of strange things have been said about neocortex. So in the, 19, in, in the 19th century, it was thought that women, frontal brain, this bit up here, which was supposed to be the, the really conscious, controlling, wonderful bit of your, your brain, that if women had a, a, a sort of shrunken frontal cortex. And then it was discovered, in fact, that people like Einstein were doing all kinds of spatial imagery and thinking about imaginative experiments, and that must have been done with a parietal lobe, which is kind of further back, and so the size of the frontal lobe was restored to women, so they have the same size frontal lobe now as men, um, and that only took 100 years. Okay, so the other myth is that we only use 10% of our brain. Now, when you couldn't help yourself, your reptile emotional brain jumped out and made you read this, and I scanned your brain, I would find activity all over your brain. And one of the great advances of the 21st century is imaging methods where we can record the activity in human brains and exactly where this activity is happening. And the good news is that there is no dark matter in the human brain. Every bit of your brain, as far as we can see at the resolution um, machines can tell us, is doing something. And we're starting to map now exactly what that something is. And so, when we look at pictures like this, and we could image your brain, even in a scanner where you're lying down and you're just looking at this picture, when you look at this picture, you can immediately, from your own personal history, say who this is. It's a child, not an adult. You can probably say something about the sex. You can probably even say something about the emotional state of that, of that child. And you can probably invent all kinds of stories of which this is just one still of what that child was up to. And this is the extraordinary quality that we have uniquely, that we have imagination. And I think what we're seeing now in neuroscience is, <coughs> as in art, as in literature, as in every activity that the human brain carries out, we see in science an extraordinary effusion of creativity, imagination, ingenuity, all those extraordinary things that have led, led, led us to this technology. And it's this technology here that has produced all of this. Thank you very much.